five dollars off at your dinner over at the uh, Lakeview, or it's also it's two restaurants. It could also be the docks. Hey, <laughs> they have fish. I want to thank you, uh, caller. Uh, we got another caller coming in. We'll wait for that. But uh, I want to mention we have Leslie Schellenberger and we have Missy Martin with us, who are operating the New Directions program, which is right next door. How close is it to Chautauqua County? Actually, we're just about three miles inside of Cat County, so inside. we're close to, very close to Chautauqua. <laughs> close to Chautauqua, for sure. And they're looking for homes for children who are in need, who need a place to live. Their parents may have passed away or may be out of the picture for one thing, reason or another. And uh, there are no more orphanages, so what they've done is created a system of uh, local uh, groups that provide for these children and try to find a home for them. It's called New Horizon, New, New Directions. Directions. New yep. Directions. And what's the whole title of it again? New Directions Youth and Family Services. There you go. New <laughs> Directions, I should write this down, Youth and Family Services. And uh, so, Missy, when you evaluate a kid, what do you look for? You take any, any kid, say the kid is a, a, is a uh, I don't know, say he is a violent type. We'll put it that way. I'm sure you've met some of these kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a violent kid, and I still am. <laughs> but, uh, what do you do? What do you look for? I try to get as much information about the child when I get uh -huh. the call. Um, if they have a violent or aggressive behavior, I want to know maybe what triggers their aggressive behavior. Um, whether it's the word no, that's a lot of times kids are aggressive when they just are told no. I understand. <laughs> um, try to find out if they're in regular classes or if they um, are in special education classes. Um, try to find out what their hobbies and interests are. And then I try to set up um, pre-placement visits with the potential foster family that I feel is a good match. Okay, so you try to bring all this together. Yeah. Right. I, I think we try and, uh, you know, some key questions foster parents will ask us. Are, do they act out sexually? Are they fire starters? Um, do they hurt animals? Um, those are things that family settings have concerns about. So yeah, I can understand why. That is the profile of your uh, classic serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> well, and sometimes it's just the youth that we yeah. see have some of those behavior patterns. So yeah. might not be appropriate for our level of care. But those right. are those tend to be three questions that are often asked by our foster parents. So they're right on our screening tool when we get a call for a referral, we ask those questions. Do they act out sexually? I mean, be, people don't want uh, kids in their home that might attack their children or grandchildren um, and don't want to be in a position where uh, that youth is appro not appropriate to be in a community setting. And there are some people like that. I mean, Correct. the right. jails are full of them, Correct. I might add. Correct. Uh, so you have to, even in the case of children, I guess you do have to screen. You Absolutely. have to check it all out. So when you got a kid that's nice and clean, seems to fit in okay, then what do you do? What do you do? You say, okay, we got a kid here. It looks like he's a real sweet kid, and we want to give him a home. What do you do now? Um, we use the team approach. So we have a team meeting, and Leslie and our youth staff and other social workers meet and try to find the best match with the foster homes that we have. And then I call the foster parent and find out if they're interested in meeting the child. Then we kind of do an interview process um, with the child, maybe the county worker, birth parents, if the birth parents are involved. Um, and then we do some day visits, um, maybe a weekend visit. We try to do it as planfully as possible. Sometimes we do get the emergency calls where we need a home by 4 o'clock on a Friday and I get the call at 3 o'clock. So a lot of our foster parents are understanding in that, that it, there are those emergency situations and they work well with that and we do our best to meet the kids' needs with the strengths of the foster parents. So you have really maybe two stages of foster homing, if I hear this right, is one where you just need a placement immediately for somebody with an adult. It might not be more than a week, a month or something, and right. it's a temporary right. thing. Everybody understands that, right? Right. right. Then you have the long-term fostering where the kid is, say, 12. He probably he could stay there for six years, right? He could. Right. And actually, he might even be adopted. Yeah. Until 21, actually. Until he's 21. And, uh, of course, at that, when, when do you, you assist that kid uh, when he's uh, 18, right? You can provide for an apartment, uh, or what's the right. age level? When, when they can stay in foster care till 21. Till 21. Right. But say they're 18, they want their own apartment. You indicated you have a program of support. Right. Mm -hmm. If if they're appropriate and that 
they're going to be able to do that but yeah. we've worked with them on those skills to assess whether they're ready for that or not so can they get themselves up in the morning and get to school get to work can they um, keep their bedroom clean can they uh, arrange to take their own medication you know we assess how prepared they are um, usually our youth don't go into that program until they're 19 or 20 because yeah. most teenagers aren't really equipped to be independent and be able to be responsible enough to live on their own at that point mm -hmm. Runaways, do you get any of them? We have some runaways huh? that uh, you know maybe aren't happy in their placement or they have an incident um, in the community uh -huh. and they're fearful of what will happen so they might run away. Um, usually it's not long term. Uh, usually within a couple hours they resurface um, and we try and encourage foster parents to be compassionate to that and try and work through the issues um, you know, in order to keep the child in their home. Okay, it sounds like a, 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 just a loving concern. Uh, if somebody wanted to uh, volunteer, mm -hmm. and I bet it's like pulling teeth it's to get people to volunteer right. because this is a major commitment. It's a major commitment, um, yeah. What, what would they call you again, Missy? What's your number? It's 358-3636, extension 232. Okay, and what are the conditions under which you will entertain processing and placing a child? Is it a child that's just P.O.'d at his family, his mother, or is it a kid? Uh, what, what are your standards here? Does it, do you take any kid in who comes along? No, they're referred from county, so it's not the county? even. The county calls us and says we need this service for this youth. Oftentimes when we get them in our program, they've been in other foster homes and not been successful because, and then we're putting more services in. We have a clinical social worker who works with each and every kid. We have a, a youth mentor who works with, um, you know, the, each youth gets a youth mentor. Um, and then our foster parents have um, training requirements every year. Then it's 24 hours of training a year minimum in order to be able to, we try and specialize their training to the kids' needs that they have in their home. So they're getting training on um, mental health issues or school issues um, and how to manage those effectively. So <coughs> um, now I lost my train of thought. You're getting as question? old as I am. How yeah. old are you? <laughs> <laughs> You're training for the kids. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. right. So the, they receive training, uh -huh. um, and hopefully we find a match that works for them, and the counties are happy with that match. Usually they approve the home prior to us placing a kid, so they know about our foster home and, you know, how many kids they have, do they have animals, is it in the country or the city, and, uh, and help us make the best decision for each child referred. Okay, great. And uh, the county kicks in on this. Yes. So you don't pay all the expenses for your kid that you will foster care. You no, the county pays the bill, basically. The counties right. refer and pay the bill for, um, yeah, for everything. So this is kind of like a dream adoption in some ways. If you get a kid that you can relate well to, uh, the kid comes with money. <laughs> right, and they come with support. And actually, you know, I guess to say that if you choose to adopt, they also, that support continues after adoption yeah, until well, the age of 21. That's so, what I'm saying. If you adopt, this is a dream adoption. I mean, absolutely. You, you want to adopt a kid. Um, now, of course, a lot of people only uh, only adopt puppies and kittens. Right. <laughs> you have some older kids, right? Right. We have older kids. Yep. Yeah. We got a uh, last call. Call you. This year, our last caller. Go ahead. You're on, and I love you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I have a question for your guest, and the question is: Is it uh, very, very difficult, or not as difficult, or what? To uh, do you get many handicapped children, and how difficult is it to place handicapped children? Um, I know we have had handicapped children in the past. We don't have any right now in terms of physical disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some agencies who specialize in that, but we do have some homes that are open to taking um, kids with disabilities. So it isn't something that's necessarily impossible to do. It all depends on how severe the disabilities are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and is there an extra incentive for people to take handicapped children as opposed to children with no handicaps? Well, the, the board rate helps support all the needs you would have. Um, depending on the severity, I mean, I know they, some might come with like um, in-home nursing care. So right. then you'd have to right. be open to having that in, in your home, maybe even 24-7. Um, so, but you receive the support you need to meet the child's needs. Okay, thank okay. you, caller. Thank we got you. a bunch of thank phone you. calls still back up. Okay, <laughs> have a good day. Okay, Bye -bye. thank you. We're, we'll take one more. Good morning, caller. Thank you for waiting. Hello? Hello? You're on. 
Hi, my name is Lynn, and okay. I'm calling to find out if I want to uh, come in to support a youth but not be a parent. Can I take your classes? There you go. That's a good question. To be more as a respite provider, maybe, just temporary care on the weekends? Is that what you're thinking? Exactly. Yes, you can come through our classes, and we have a lot of homes that strictly just do respite and would help out on the weekends or um, maybe a night if the foster parents um, have a family emergency or just need a, a break. <laughs> Yes, you could come through our classes and do what we call as respite. It's very important too, uh, yes. because so when somebody's having a hard time, uh, they'll be running 24-7 uh, without help, and that respite is so important. Absolutely. I know that. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. thank you, Carl. That's a great thought. Does that answer your question? Oh, it was great. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I hope you participate. It's oh, a, I will. It's a, you know, you, you talk about people going to church and worshiping and so forth. This is... Uh, acting out God's will, God's help. It's a, it's a wonderful program. Reed, and if I could just say again, August 25th, we're starting uh, certification classes. So anybody interested in that, please call Missy at 358-3636, extension 232. 358-3636. Yes. Okay, that's good Thank enough. Thank you. The two of you do wonderful work. Yes, you do. Uh, All right, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank well, you. Well, uh, you, uh, work is, there are two ways to worship the Lord. One is through... Uh, piety and worship and singing and so forth. And the other was good works. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed the program. Uh, Leslie, I appreciate your coming here. And Missy, you've done Thank a you. great job. And I want to just leave you with the phone number again, one more time. 358-3636, extension 232. Okay. And if you want to give your, your heart and soul to a good cause. Okay, my friends, I just got this sound and uh, that means we're out of here they're throwing me off the air so we're finished okay <laughs> all right thank, thank you well, thank you very much and uh caller i'm sorry we'll get to you next time <laughs> we've got a couple of callers waiting all right i want to thank special people out there all the people who are watching the callers the wonderful people in our county i want to thank especially chuck kelsey Devin taylor chris burt i want to thank randy burt chris ramaker jeff zook don zins john hamels and the whole wide world, your universe to the, your magic carpet to the universe is right here. <laughs> Call this number anytime you want. Okay, may all that is proud and true and noble abide with you. I'm Reed Powers. <laughs>